to slide the carburetors back in. And before I pop them into place, I'm going to try to get these hoses back out of my way. Starting off, I'm going to try to reattach these hoses first. Because while I have some flexibility with the carburetor, this will be a lot easier. So, I've got a T-junction on these lines. And, I don't have any vice grips or needle nose. on now I gotta reconnect the other side <laughs> so I'm gonna have to pull up to do that this can be a lot harder to see can I mention yeah. <clears throat> when installing these uh, they go on in a specific manner there's ways that you can adjust the screws on there but they will point out the left side right side once you start fitting them on there there's a little tab inside there that they have to sit on appropriately and those get seated in there you'll know they'll be correct when the screws are facing towards you so that you can actually get a screwdriver in there and tighten them down that's going to be the same with the float bowls too. You want your float bowl screws facing the outside of the carburetor so that they can be adjusted, drained, or whatnot without having to remove the carburetors. Because that would just be fun. Unless you like a challenge. I mean, you know. My camera angle was horrible a second ago, so there it is now. You were probably just looking at a black hose. Okay, I've almost got that on. What I'm going to move to next, which I could do this after affixing the carburetors down, I'm going to go to the choke cable and get that reattached at the front of the carburetor set if I can get this piece <laughs> and like we we were discussing earlier this is not a complete carburetor rebuild we did not crack open and get into the slides and all that uh, if that is something we have viewers that have a, a strong interest in uh, click the subscribe button hit like on this video leave a comment asking for us to get into that we'll pull another one apart we'll probably get into Joe's or we may actually get into both of them again so we can do a absolutely smash up job on uh, cleaning have more time and people aren't trying to go on vacation and whatnot. Okay, so now I've got the heart of uh, the uh, choke line reinstalled. And I don't know if you can see this. Uh, show where this is at. I tried to point it out earlier, but you know this is just a real easy piece right here. And you'll just activate the carburetor or the choke and slide it in real easy. And then uh, we'll screw this back down. I'm just holding that choke cable in a good position. Keep it from floating around or developing slack. And now, we're going to try to reset these carburetors in place on these 
rubbers, rubber grommets, uh, connect couplers. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, there's a tool there. Okay, so much as we showed earlier, using some leverage and some uh, a little bit of torque to get those in uh, off. I'm gonna be doing the same thing to get them back on. Let me make sure all my hoses are back where they're supposed to be. And I got one hung up. So. That fuel line needs to be pretty free and clear. So I'm gonna change their position. Fuel line straight because we want gas. We want screaming eagles. I know. Metro Cruiser. Japanese bike. But we're in America. So. Is this a good time to mention that uh, what intelligence, gentleness, and finesse? will not do ignorant brute force will absolutely okay so you can see here where it has not seated yet can you see the front one Joe yep it ain't seated either. Okay, so I'm gonna just stick my hand in between the frame. Try to get the front to seat first. Looks like I'm seated on both of this side. So, oh, I was seated on both of this side. How's the back one look now? Uh, it's not there. Mm. Okay. All right, so since I have the front seated, I'm going to go ahead and take this op opportunity to tighten them down. This bike is a black screw on that rubber piece, just tightening up tension on uh, does not feel like that's sides so we're really hoping that when this video comes together and gets posted or put out on YouTube that it is helpful for maybe a new Magna owner uh, to gain confidence in being able to work on their own bike. This is a really great bike. For the most part, they're easy to work on. Um, Put it in gear to prevent it from rolling. Oh. 
also added performance to this bike. The flames on the tires. Out the gate, that's uh, that's 10 more horse right there. You got that bark over there. Oh yeah, a little bit of persuasion, eh? So that was what was her name? Kesha. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. I do tree work, and some comments were made, some jokes were made, and then Joe played that timber song, so I had to put it on my phone, and I believe I'm already tired of it. Boy, this, no, this does not want any part. So when it popped earlier, I pulled the coupler off the motor. It's on. It's on the uh, the carburetor now, but it pulled right off the motor. That one's still, yeah. Okay, that one's good. Almost there. And then she's in. Both sides? Feels like it. No, she's seated yeah. all the way now in. Now she is. Oh, yeah, she's seated yeah, all the way in there. Okay, so now we're just going to go through, tighten all the, the rings on those connections. I'm going to go ahead and reconnect the throttle. <clears throat> um, so please subscribe, like the video, tell somebody you know or share the video with somebody that you think would enjoy it. Until Joe bought the blue Magna, I was a proud Magna owner, uh, and I'm not going to lie, I'm more of a crotch rocket person, I used to be on the track and everything, and uh, I feel more at home on a crotch rocket, but the bike I've been riding for I don't know how long is a 97 Honda Valkyrie. Uh, my dad hasn't been riding it, so... I've been holding on to it to make sure it doesn't sit again. So right now, I'm going to pull this straight and try to check the tensions. I would like to see responsiveness out of the throttle when it's let off. But he has a cruise control function on here. So I'm not going to see what I would like to see out of thr throttle response. His hangs wide open. And I've, that is not a choice that I would go. I wouldn't go with this particular one. I don't know who built it or anything, but that throttle will just hang wide open. So I'm just testing its responsiveness as far as when it's going to trigger the slides and everything. I think that should be sufficient for it. Uh, 
tubs. Go ahead and put these gaskets in. Springs, whatever you want to call them. They're going to drop in right below the funnels that go inside the air box for atomization. If I can... We're losing our light a little bit in the shop. If anybody would like to donate lights, we'd appreciate any support. I did not realize the throttle was like that. I really am not a fan of the throttle on this particular bike because of what that, uh... Now granted, this, this one sat out in a open air shed for a long time, so that may be some part of some of this bike's problems. here from the future but there is a front and a back and what will occur and you, you really don't even have to mark it if when you're putting it back together you'll check the bottom of the air the plastic of the air box piece to make sure that it will align because if you put it on backwards it will not align set this pan in gently the key thing with setting this in is you don't want to knock those pieces of rubber out of place so when you're working with these funnels they're just going to slide right through this aluminum plate and set down into the carburetors. You just play with them a little bit and you'll, you'll get them to slide in. There's a... They have small grooves on them. This one got messed up. But they have small grooves at little dog ears they'll just slide into the appropriate position and being that these funnels are made of aluminum do be careful with them they are not very robust in their design Just like that, I knocked that gasket out of place. Mm -hmm. It's set. Looks good? Yeah. Okay, so. Alright, well, I broke Joe's camera mount. And... I've got it rigged in place, but I don't think it can go anywhere without uh, substantial issues. Anyhow, so we're going to get back to putting this aluminum plate. Back on, sorry. I'm just getting a little, uh, a little coffee in me. So like I was saying... Right before you throw this on, just double check to make sure everything's lining up. And I've got my direction correct this time. <coughs> so we're going to set this in and then prepare 
these horns and if you just rotate them slide into place this part of it you can make very difficult but these are these don't actually attach to anything they just kind of fall into place y'all let me know if y'all see any bald spots while y'all are up there uh, my wife seems to have found that I might be thinning which hey okay uh, let's see here knock the gasket out so if you'll keep this elevated and try to just put it let it fall into place I'm gonna get the other two in before I start ah! really doing that patience when you're working on this part because they can frustrate you a little bit if you allow them to. I think typically the best way to go about this is to try and set up two on one side before moving on to the next. And letting that aluminum plate kind of hold them in place. Huh. This is nothing that you want to force though. These are delicate and the tabs that hold them in place can be easily bent. So you just want to take your time. I'm not sure. This may be a three week project. Just kidding. I don't, I'm not positive how much time we've got in on it so far. It's a beautiful morning, and other than when the occasional bird flies in the shop and starts yelling at me, it's quiet and no interruptions today. Okay, so I seem to have them all in place except for one. And isn't it always the last Lego or the last domino that always gets you? Okay, come on. I think it's almost there. There we go. <sighs> so, with these horns and this aluminum box... Just be patient. And we're going to put these brass fittings there. I wish I knew what to tell you they're called. I may uh, try and put some text on the screen. Set these in place. And begin to uh, screw those in. I've got a couple Allen screws that I'm working with. And then I've got 
the rest are Phillips. And I don't know exactly how that happened, but I'm letting you know because they're not all going to look the same for sure. To try and make sure all your gaskets are in place, the little rubber in between this aluminum plate and the carburetors, now is the time to do it. If you can see under there, if you pull it up too much, you're just going to pop everything back out of place as far as the horns are concerned. But definitely don't want things... Oh, hello, birdie. I don't think there's anything in the shop you want to eat, bud. Maybe the beautiful little bird just wants to serenade me with its beautiful song. At one time, I would have thought, how in the world can something so small be so loud? Then I had kids. And I love my kids to death. But right now, my four-year-old, he does not like loud noises unless they're coming from him. They don't seem to bother him when he's making the loud noises. And trying to explain this to him, I don't know if that's working or not. He does not like to be told that he's too loud. And I'm sure he gets it from his daddy. No. Okay, I'm gonna secure the Allen ones down first. Just to get them out of the way. Because when I get into the Phillips head, that's gonna go a lot faster. Those down a little. Oh, good morning, Charles. Yes, I'm just talking to the birds and the camera. I broke Joe's uh, camera mount. Are you serious? Yeah, sure did. On uh, his motorcycle? No, on this one. <laughs> I'm sure it's cheap. I'll replace it. I'll go buy the Bush McCall and see if they got them there. It's five and below. Dude, this thing is not wanting to align. Well, I brought you a fresh cup. Well, I thank you, sir. It's the Starbucks. Starbucks. Yeah. Starbucks. Oh, Charles. Now? Your motorcycle giving me a headache. The screws don't want to squirrel in. Where do I suppose the goals? I know I've been harping on it. We got all the screws in, but when it comes to moving these little, uh, metal flanges into place do it slowly so that you don't heat them up they will ow, break easily so you just you don't want them to get hot and weak it's the primary deal and typically when you're doing a carb job you're, these are parts that you are going to want to put new ones on just in case they have been worked on. It's kind of like any any situation where you have a, where you have to bend metal. The more you do it, the weaker it's going to get. And then, I mean, they're not very expensive. So to replace them on the forefront, not a bad idea. So, ta-da! Our horns are in place. Everything's. Looking good. We're going to go to sliding in carefully. 
this black plastic piece that is the bottom of the air box. Yes, and Charles is helping me out. The wires will get in the way. And it's got a little uh, a little flap on the front that helps to prevent either dust or heat from getting to a certain area. Uh, and now's a good time to affix this hose on the back of this piece. Go ahead and secure it. That way it's not fighting against you. the throttle cables and go ahead and start trying to slide this down into position once you can get it where it'll sit right and you see that everything's lining up where am I hanging at? no there we go it's got a little lip in there that once you get it on that lip, you'll know. Go ahead and tighten down the front of it. It's got three screws. I suppose I will be replacing Joe's little phone camera mount, selfie stick, whatever you want to call that. I wonder how long before his. His starts doing what mine did. Carburetor. Uh, it may not. Yeah. Because I rode the blue one. This That's one right. just sat there. That's why I don't understand when uh, Miles was going to buy this. <laughs> well, he rode the blue one more than he did the black one. Because the blue one had a tire and was ready to ride. Oh, okay. Yeah, it seems to slide in pretty well. And it's a tight fit, so I'm just getting everything, you know, taking your time, making sure you don't rip any of the, the soft rubber, breaking a seal on anything. Play with it just a little bit. Make sure that the uh, that soft rubber on that air filter drops into the placement where it's supposed to go. Being that it's so soft, you really probably can get away with just tightening it down and torquing it a little bit, and it'll squish and seal so we're just gonna start snugging the air box all down and the screws do have a little bit different placement but it's pretty easy to see from the side you know long screw short screw short screw And I know one of these, either the screw or the aluminum plate, is uh, stripped. What? what, what? Yeah, on one of them. What, for this cover? Yeah. And no, uh, you're not gonna notice. Here you go, Charles. One's gonna go up here, and then one's gonna go in here. Begin 
securing those. And guys, we're just about done with this. Like I said, I, I was, one of the things is uh, Charles had an issue with his bike. I definitely wanted to help him out, but uh, I wanted to show you guys, help build your confidence. I am by no means an expert, but I wanted to show you that just in case, you know, either you don't have the money to have a professional work on it, or you want to learn more about your bike, which, man, that's, that's a great thing for sure. You have more confidence and more pride in, in your stuff when you learn how to work on it, I think. That's my opinion on it. Not as bad as I thought it was. It's just, if you just take the time, there's, a, there's no reason why. You couldn't do it yourself. Right. If you got the time to spend on the project, it's definitely a good thing to do. Occasionally. That if some if something does go wrong, you don't get all stressed out, as stressed out about oh, you know, it's the end of the world. Now I will say, growing up I took apart way too many remote controls. <laughs> And had no clue how to get them back together. You start ripping wires out and stuff. It helps to know what you're doing. Okay, so if you'll hand me the little snorkel piece that's over there. I'm going to slide that back into place. What size of that wrench? Or both of them this side? Uh... This just slides in on a lip, which, uh, like I said, I think when I was taking it off, some people actually leave that off. I don't know if it hurts performance or not. There's a little bar that drops in. It's just going to be a small piece of metal. <coughs> and this piece is just going to slide in underneath and secure that ding snorkel from did i win something i heard a ding oh, oh boy i dropped both the screws i think i'm a winner charles i heard a ding So, I believe we are to the point of putting this framing back on. This one's going to bolt here, here. This is going to pull through it and put that little air box or whatever that thing is. Shove this throttle underneath there. Throttle cable. Joe, uh, go to the ministry this morning. Yeah. But that was a nice ride. This is a good time to go ahead and pull this cable out and uh, flip it back to where it's supposed to be. As well as taking your throttle adjustment 
right here. Putting that in place. I'm going to go ahead and get the, uh, the choke line back into place. It's got a little notch on the bottom that allows it to slide in. I may have already put it back up. It's a quarter inch driver ratchet. Y'all going back to cut the tree tomorrow? I don't know. I may just run by there and check, see how the burn piles are. Uh -huh. Why is that? I just want to take the same guys I had, take back over there you want. Oh, that's fine. Nah, even if we do go cut, I'll just use Andy and Joe. We've gotten this far along. Um, we've got all the air box back together. Oh, Charles already put that side on. Yay! Okay. So right here, we're going to have these little pieces. Charles, if you grab that screw out of there so it doesn't fall out. We're gonna slide this down, and then this piece just slides right in, and it's got a little screw hole. Charles, grab it. Okay. I think that more or less is just to make things look pretty. Cosmetic. Yeah, for the most part. It may operate some form of function as a dust shield, but I doubt it. And at this point, pretty much all we have left is fuel lines, stuff connecting to the tank, and bolting the tank down. There you go. Throw this little cover on on this side. Watch your head. On the underside of the tank, there's a little uh, C, a piece of metal that's shaped like a C, and it's just going to hang there. Between that, and this bolt right here, that's all that holds this tank on. Unless you want to count your fuel lines and whatnot. So, I'm going to have Charles hold the camera as I uh, grab the tank. Bring it over. Oh. Out. And Charles! There's bugs getting in the coffee! Oh well, they won't, they won't drink much. Okay, so underneath the tank, look at this piece up close. This is what's going to slide onto those rubber grommets. Yeah.
just a little wiggle and they should pop on there. And the way you'll know they're, they're in the right up. spot is when this up. hole aligns up. But before we're bolting that down, we're just going to replace our fuel lines, which I recommend doing this, this little one first, and I think you lost all your gas. Yeah. Yeah. This tank is light. There ain't no gas there. I just told your other five gallons when I put it in the motor, it got the grass the other day again. And you didn't replace it? I got oh, it. looky there. Got to replace now it. Now it comes back to bite you. <laughs> <laughs> we can't run. I used all your gas. Oh, man. Yeah, but there's a gas that you told me not to burn in here either. Huh? You told me not to burn that gas in this motorcycle. Oh, was it ethanol? Yeah, that's what you told me to get. No, getting on ethanol. No, I got it. I got it up there at uh, Jordan's. Uh -uh. Walmart. Come and go. So I know they don't have it. Nope. Yeah, you don't want that gas in this bike. What? Non or uh, ethanol? You only want. If Where you can it? handle it, only run non ethanol. Corn is bad, especially if you don't chew it up well. Yeah, I saw the. <laughs> the dust in the ball in them in bowls. Now the other side of it is if you're gonna be running the fuel through really fast, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. I mean it does, but it's not crucial. <coughs> How did all my gas leak out? Uh, Wasn't the, the thing turned off? I thought I had the back cock off. This thing may need a new back cock. Oh man, nope. That's easy fix. Back cocks aren't cheap though. They yeah, are when you take it off with a blue one. You don't want that one on here. <laughs> I mean, you may, but you talk about bad gas mileage now. Throw that one on the blue one on here. It's a performance one. I spent most of the day yesterday uh, calling everybody, getting their input on having the, the uh, cookout event type thing over here. Yeah. Everybody's for it. They all want to know when. Well, it's going to take a minute, you know, to get it set up. The tank. I just knocked the hole in your tank, Charles. Yeah, bigger. Cheers. Burgers, hot dogs, country style ribs. We we'll get Zach if he shows up. We we'll get him a steak. Make him sing for a supper. That'd be funny. I'm serious. Tell him. You want to eat? You got to sing. You got to sing for your supper, boy. I'm just hoping that'll go through. Amy thinks she can pull it off. I mean, we will YouTube that big time. Starting fluid in my coffee. I bet that was good. <coughs> um. <coughs> yeah, I even thought about uh, Golly. inviting Brian and this bed out. Okay, so 
We've come to a point where the saddlebags and the seat is all that's left. We're about to uh, fill up the fuel tank and uh, test this out. All right, guys, so we just got uh, gas in the tank. We got the fuel turned on. We're gonna get the uh, carburetors primed back up and see how this goes. Break your bar out of the way. It's hitting on that side. It sounds like it's hitting beautiful. 